You gave him this receipt? Yeah. Just a couple of hours ago. For a lunar energizer. A what? It's just one of our lines. Things we sell. We've an astral emporium. I mean, it's all perfectly genuine. Yes, I'm sure. We know your market vehicle. I sometimes work for the police in England. All right, Gladys. Why do you want to see me? You know his name? His address? Why? He's been murdered. Shot. Dear God. It looks like robbery. Pockets empty, no wallet, watch, passport. Your receipt was the only thing he had on him. Boy. What boy? Yeah, that's him. You mentioned Mr. Stackpole had a briefcase, too. Black, crocodile skin, expensive. Name tag on it. Good, good. You got that, Matthew. Um, since you are so observant, Mr. Moon, maybe you could describe the mugger's gun. No good on shooters. And it was dark in Gladys's booth. Well, it doesn't matter. We've got a good description of the young man, and we know what sort of gun the bullet came from. You say this poor bloke was a channel tunnel engineer? Apparently. Well, we're here to consult with his French colleagues. The Kent police are flying his widow over at first light. By the way, <laughs> you call the fortune teller Gladys. She is your mother, is she not? There are times when I wouldn't want people to know that. She likes being called Gladys. Gives her delusions of youth. Police helicopter's waiting to take you over to Boulogne. Thank you, Sergeant. Of course, uh, if you'd rather travel by ferry. No, no, the quicker I get there, the better. Thank you, Mr. McNulty. Right, it's in. See you next Friday. Uh, yeah? Just one bar item, Trevor. 78 francs. Uh, your mother's nightcap. Ah. At least three large ones. 80. Yes. Quick, Gladys, let's go. God, my room is so stuffy. I've got such a mind grain. I mean, Etienne's central heating is like a furnace. A little less of Etienne's gin and more of his tonic might help. What's tonic got to do with central heating? Oh, I'm so glad I caught you. Inspector Sardou wants to see you over at the police station. Oh, uh, would you want a ferry in half an hour? Uh, it won't take long. Uh, a road patrol arrested that student, Sebastian Planar, and uh, we need you for an ID. All oh, right. Oh, poor Sebastian. May the 14th, Taurus, pleasant... Open, sensitive, now he's not. He points a gun at you, apparently kills and robs somebody else, and you like him. And you forget how Taurians frequently need money through weakness of character, particularly for gambling. <laughs> you know, Trevor, even though you're my own, you sometimes surprise me. Why didn't you just ride your bike home to Lille? Why sleep in a barn? I'll tell you why, plain hard. You wanted to keep off the roads in case there was a hue and cry. No, I explained. My lights weren't working properly. I didn't want to break the law. <laughs> so you admit to holding up Madame Moon, but you didn't want to break the law? It was just for the money. I'd never have hurt anyone. I told you my gun was a fake. A toy I didn't shoot. I never could have shot this Englishman you talk about. 
The bullet that killed him came from a Smith and Wesson. What was your toy replica of? Look at me. I think it was the same sort of gun. Oh, really? And I threw it away. But you don't know where you got rid of it. Thanks. As I was riding along. Somewhere on the roadside near Santa Maria. Do you know exactly where you flip your cigars out of your car window? Please don't do that. Exactly where on the road to Santa Maria? <sighs> All right. Take his prints. Lock him up. Not before I called a lawyer. Oh, yes, of course, I forgot. You're a student. Thank you both for coming in, but I'm afraid to say I may have wasted your time. Oh, I hope not. Um, have you got any fresh cream for this? Trevor? Yes, of course. No, uh, I mean, I haven't wasted your time. I would have required extra statements from you both anyhow. So, uh, you've caught the student? Yes, no need to put him in an identity parade. He's admitted threatening you, Gladys. My character assessment of him was justified. He has an open personality. Yes, he's also admitted to four other hold-ups in the Paracal area in the last three weeks. Oh, dear. Lost his university grant money in the casino. <laughs> what did I tell you? Oh. I'm sorry, I was broke. Shut up. Get him out of here. Did they tell you my gun was plastic? Please, come into my office. Make your statements. We'll keep you informed. We're in France the second half of most weeks. Yes, I shall have to investigate your mysterious words. Forgive me. And thanks again. This is Stackpool. I am Inspector Maurice Sardou. Come with me, please. Maybe I should leave this for her. Stackpool's check. Don't be daft. Keep it. God, Gladys. Have you no morals? It's hardly the right time to return money, Trevor. <laughs> Gladys had our time over this trip. You could say that, Dennis. So you're reading about a murder? Yeah, special interest. I met him. So did I. Lots of times, you know, since they started the tunnel. Fine bloke, Mr Stackpole. Good tipper and all. Oh, was he? Yeah. We often used to have a chat about how the tunnel was coming along, you know. I used to be a tunneler myself. Hong Kong, Saudi, Snowy River, you name it. Dust got on my chest, gave me bronchitis, so I came to see. What about him being murdered, don't it? Almost like a prophecy in your line of work. What's odd? Well, robbery's given us a motive, right? Seems to be, yeah. But was it, I asked myself. Why? Well, on account of my experience in construction, Mr Stackpole was telling me about a little bit of suspected jiggery pokery over the strength of some concrete funny business about aggregates and materials like stressing rods. He says that if he, if he did nail these big contractors, they'd be gunning for him. He says this to me on the morning crossing, and by nightfall he's shot dead. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? I've been looking at that profile you did on Sebastian. What you were sceptical about him? Did some work on it from his details. Broadened it into a chart using the computer. My. 
Aren't we widening our horizons? If your astral calculations are right, Taurus rising, a second house conjunction with the sun, and given the year 1966 already showing strong signs of Aquarius dawning, you may not think you inherited a good deal from your dear old dad, but by heavens you inherited a lot from me. Now Sebastian's chart, apart from his weakness for gambling, the six houses in Ascendant are easily interpreted. One of which shows Sebastian shies away from any real form of physical violence. Exactly. Your natal chart analysis is fantastic. I used a pendulum. Dowsing the map of the Pas de Calais. Now there was a strong pull in this area, just north of Santa Mer. I recognize that pendulum. One Christmas I gave it to your father. Through crystal. Yeah, I know. You are a funny one, you know. One minute you're scoffing at psychic vibrations, the next minute you're dowsing with the best of them. I don't scoff at all of it, Gladys. You know, I think I might have pinpointed something on a larger scale map. Well, haven't the police been looking? Yeah, I phoned Inspector Sardou last night. They have searched this area, but they didn't find a fake gun. Sebastian can't be having a very good night's sleep either. There's something else. Stackpool's check. I've been dousing it as well. Always the same. Horizontal strokes. East-west with definite trembling. The Odic sign for murder. Yeah. What else is Stackpool trying to tell us? <laughs>